Good day, good day everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Today we are checking out the latest hero into the Monster Island family. Uh, specifically, we are going to check out the five-star legendary purple heroine, Sakura, the Master of Tranquility. Now, Sakura has just been added to the portal uh, in July 2024. Um, it's a portal that rolls around once every eight weeks. Uh, it, is an on, it is on an alternating monthly time slot with the other Alliance events. So uh, every other month we get the Monster Island uh, portal and the one in between we get the Mechanoid Menace event. Um, Sakura, as I mentioned, fresh in July 2024, the event was originally featured with its OG heroes back in February 2022, so a bit, just a bit under two and a half years since the event first came out is when Sakura has been added in. The portal itself, we can see the odds are shown there as giving a 1.2% chance to gain an event hero. Uh, off each of your individual summons. Now, there are no featured or unfeatured odds in this portal, which does mean that you have equal odds of gaining any of the heroes. Um, it does also mean that the net odds for the portal are a little bit reduced. Typically with featured and unfeatured portals, we see a total odds of 1.6-ish percent, whereas here we can see it's just the 1.2% chance shown there. So to put that 1.2% chance in perspective for this portal, if you were to do 100 summons here, across those 100 summons, you would have a 70% probability of getting any of the 11 Monster Island uh, legendary heroes. Uh, so that's any one of them, not a specific one. If you are going for a specific Monster Island hero, it drops off to being just a 10.3% probability uh, for that specific one that you are targeting. And notably that the odds will drop off even further um, as more heroes get added into the portal over time. Um, let's just uh, chuck you guys on pause for a sec and I'm gonna jump across and we can take a look at Secura's artwork. So here we have Secura's artwork. So thank you very much to Rancid Destroyer for passing this along, do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we can see this is Secura's artwork. She is titled the Master of Tranquility. Um, I'm not exactly certain how that ties into the rest of her artwork, but we can see that we're sort of continuing with that ninja-esque uh, theme that we've been seeing with some of the more recent ones with uh, Nomad and Zodiac, and now uh, Secura is a, a third option into that family uh, of uh, ninjas, so to speak. So uh, this time around, she's carrying a machete uh, with a um, a sheath tucked around behind her back. Uh, I'm not sure about the rest of it, but we've obviously got some form of shoulder armor, um, which is going to do a huge amount of protection because it covers so much of her body. It's not like, you know, she's got vital organs that are protected or not protected anywhere else on her body. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's uh, that's her artwork. So feel free to pause it if you wish. Um, but otherwise, we're going to duck back across and we can take a bit more of a detailed look at the rest of her card. So Sakura is a member of the Hunter family, which means that she is going to gain an increase in healing when there are multiple unique Hunter family members uh, in a battle. Specifically, if you've got two, three, four, or five unique members from the Hunter's family, they will each receive an increase of 10, 15, 20, or 25% healing. So um, generally, I'm not a big fan of this family bonus. Uh, Sakura is now the first healer into this family. Um, before her, there is absolutely no synergy within the family for for healing increase. And generally speaking, I also find this um, healing increases to be fairly negligent. Um, they don't tend to contribute too much to it. But it is interesting that SGG are now adding a healer into the mix. Maybe we'll see another one or two, which might actually make the family bonus work quite well with itself. But I still don't see it being a great family bonus. Uh, there is an emphasis on the word unique there. It does have to be different heroes uh, of the family in order to gain that bonus. So you can't just get it from uh, having two copies of Secure in a fight. It's got to be two different heroes, like combining Secure with Zodiac or Accent as a couple different examples. There is also a bit of a bonus that we can see down the bottom there for using the Monster Island heroes during the Monster Island event. Specifically, they gain a stat bonus as well as getting a 20% chance to apply a one-turn attack delay and a one-turn silence to the target or targets of their special skill when they cast it. Um, there is also that attack and defense bonus giving you a plus 4, 8, 12, 16 or 20% attack and defense boost uh, when you have 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 unique Hunter family members in the team. Note that these things only apply when you use the heroes in the Monster Island event. Uh, they don't apply during any other time in the game. Um, so yeah, people get caught out by that a little bit. 
Uh, on her personal side of things, we can see that Sakura comes in with 708 attack, 839 defense, and 1,457 HP. So there is a little bit of a skew going from that attack stat towards the defense stat, and a little bit to the HP, but mostly it goes towards that defense stat. Um, so we can see that skew going on there. There is also a little bit of a HP, uh, sorry, a power difference between her and some of the, the other Monster Island heroes. So Sakura is there at 738 total power. Um, the OG Monster Island heroes are just down around that 705, 706 range. So quite a bit of a difference there. The power in the end of it is just a metric for their base stats. So um, the more power they have, the more stats they've got to distribute amongst the attack, defense, and HP. Um, it's kind of just a visualization of the power creep that goes on um, in the game. Um, so yeah, there, moving on from that, we can take a look at her speed, which is set to 53. Uh, so it's an average speed hero requiring 10 tiles to charge or five ghosted tiles. The speed break happens at speed 58, so it does need a plus five speed improvement. That'll get you down to nine tiles to charge. Um, so for purple, it's quite a bit of a, a spoiled for choice sort of situation. Um, being plus five, you can get it using either of the speed guns available to purple. So you've got either the Inksplosion B90, which is a vanilla gun giving plus nine, um, but there's also the Pearl Scale Convex, which is a weapon of the month giving you a plus six speed improvement. Uh, the double break doesn't happen until speed 65, which you just can't get to, even if you were to combine the plus nine speed weapon with the 2% charge generation node found at plus 19 on her tree. Um, so there's really no point to getting um, the class node for Sakura at all um, because of how far it is away from a base speed to get the first break, but also how easy it is to get with the weapons available in purple. <laughs> In terms of her class, uh, Sakura is a member of the Medic class, which grants her the chance to heal all of her allies for 7% health after receiving any damage. That damage can be from any source. It can be from tiles, minions, slash attacks, special skills, any of those sort of things. Um, it's a bit of a handy perk. It's sort of free healing to all allies without you having to do literally anything. And the only downside to it really is that it only procs once a turn. So it happens at the end of the turn and it doesn't matter how many instances of damage you take, there will only be one chance at that healing spray. So yeah. Um, by way of a natural emblem path, let's jump across into the roster and we can take a look. Um, so being a damage dealing healer, Sakura is a bit of an interesting case because you can make an argument to go either way on her tree. Um, for me personally, I would probably advocate for going the defense and HP path just because for healers and support heroes, that is the path that makes the most sense. Um, so if we were to look at this on a grid, this is the defense and HP path. Um, so I personally, I tend to prefer um, defense points over health, mainly because uh, it allows you to make better use of things like minions and armor. So we are going to still prioritize the defense as the secondary. So looking at this on the graph, it kind of looks like this the whole way down um, until we get down to plus 18 there. There's not really any need, as I said, to get the plus 19 or 20 nodes. Neither of them are overly relevant. As I said, the charge generation bonus doesn't help her and the crit chance is nice, but not worth that many. And Frankly, plus 20 on these heroes is a waste, an absolute waste of emblems. So plus 18 is as far as I would go um, for Secura. And that's what that grid looks like for a defense and HP path. Um, the interesting thing with Secura is that she does deal damage as well as part of her skill. So you could make an argument to go the attack path to enhance that damage output. It looks pretty similarly. Um, there's only two nodes where it actually changes direction. Um, because you are prioritizing attack now, we are going to take the side with the percentage-based attack buff um, and then still following it down. And then this is the other split at the bottom there. So that's the attack path. I personally, though, I wouldn't go that route. Um, I see her being primarily a support hero. So the path that I would advise looks like this on Secura. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the path I would do. So feel free to pause it if you wish, but otherwise, Let's uh, go and check out what her special skill actually does. 
So Sakura's special skill is titled Serene Blade, and at level 10 skill and 53 charge speed, it will deal 410% damage to the target with minor damage being dealt to nearby enemies. It will then regenerate 680 HP over four turns for the caster and nearby allies, as well as providing the caster and nearby allies with a plus 94% defense buff against yellow for the next four turns. And finally, at the bottom there, we see that the caster and nearby ailment, uh, sorry, allies will resist new ailments for the next four turns which is an effect that cannot be cleared so a lot of stuff going on in there there's four dot points and then each of them have a lot of intricacies to them so let's start off with the damage component as we always do so damage uh, itself before we jump into it I just want to explain the phrasing minor damage so minor damage is for um, ease of interpretation what it is is it's just uh, one half of the listed percentage in this special skill. So in the case of Sakura, she deals 410% damage to the target. So the two nearby enemies will get half of that. So they'll get 205% uh, damage uh, done to them. So it's a fair bit of a step down. Uh, and because of how the damage calculation actually runs, it ends up being 42% of the damage that is done to the nearby enemies as compared to how much is done to the target. So because it's this big slide off in the damage that gets dealt to the nearby enemies, I personally classify these um, these minor damage heroes as having splash damage uh, and then just compare them to snipers because that's where the predominant amount of their damage goes is on a single target, which is what a sniper does. So with that in mind, let's uh, let's have a look at a comparison for them. So damage as always, it's easy enough to calculate, but there is a bit of variability in it. So for simplicity, I then go and compare heroes based on their attack power, which is just a hero's attack stat, 708, multiplied by the percentage in their special skill. Uh, and then for Secura, we can see that she comes out with an attack power of 2,902, uh, with splash damage to nearby enemies. So half of that to the nearby enemies. If we were to speed normalize it, we get to a tile, sorry, an attack power per tile of 290, which lands her there at seventh position of the purple snipers. Uh, the nearby enemies are getting half of that, so they get the, what's that, 145, which is very far down the list. It's at the bottom of the list. So that's why I tend to just classify them as snipers at the end of the day. So for Secure, though, as I said, the primary temp primary target gets that 290 attack power per tile directed at them, which is, it's pretty good, right? It's middle of the pack, seven of the 18 options that's available to purple in the snipers. Um, if we looked at every single sniping option in the game uh, across the five stars, she comes out as being 25 or 25th out of the 86 options available. So in that top quarter kind of region, um, a bit above the halfway point for the total snipers. So not too bad a damage dealer. Um, I don't see this as being a bad thing because for me, I see Secure's primary effects or most notable purpose being the secondary, like the stuff listed later down in a skill. So having a healer that's got some pretty decent damage uh, up front as well is pretty nice. It's I think it's actually the only hero that does this in this fashion, which is very nice. Um, so yeah. 9 out of 18, middle of the pack of the snipers in purple. Um, but like I said, I don't see her being primarily a, a sniper. You know, you've got proper out-and-out -out snipers like Flak and Mallet and Cruz and Variant Sure Shot and such, um, even Amethyst. These guys are dealing out a lot more attack power per tile um, than what Secura is doing. But in saying that, Secura is still above the likes of, you know, you've got Siegfried, Sure Shot, Vari uh, sorry, Normal Sure Shot, Bunny Hop, uh, shut down coaster and the like. She's doing more damage than those people, and they are primarily snipers in a lot of those cases. So, yeah, pretty good option um, to give you a little bit of extra damage in your team, with minor damage being dealt to nearby enemies as well. Moving on from the damage, we can take a look at the heal over time. So the caster and nearby allies regenerate 680 HP over four turns. So if we were to compare this to other purple healers, we can see that Sakura comes out with a heal per tile of 204, which is third of the purple healers in the game. You know, you've got the best option is El Coyote. He's the best direct healer, uh, giving 500 health to all of his allies. Um, Sakura, though, is 204, not too far off from what El Coyote is doing. So there is a little bit of an interesting thing with this. Um, so Sakura is the highest 
a, a very highly ranked AoE 3 healer. So you'll note that the other ones on this list, the, the AoE 3s are quite a bit below. You know, you, the best other purple one you can see is Mr. Magnet coming in at 75 heal per tile, whereas Secure is still clicking out 204 heal per tile. So the only AoE 3 healer who is higher than Secure in the game is Pavati, and that's because she's got some crazy amounts of armor that she generates over the, the three turns. But Secure is a very good option, you know. As I said, three out of the 11 on purple is the healers. Um, but if we were to look at all of the pseudo and direct healers across four and five star heroes in the game, she's 11 of 55. So again, in that top 20% um, that she's going to be in that range as well, which is, is pretty good. In terms of the heal per turn, uh, sorry, the heal over time itself, um, 680 over four turns roughs it. Uh, sorry, it works out as being 170 heal per turn, which is also extremely high. Um, so most heal over times, the next best option available is 399 over three turns, uh, which works out to be 133 heal per turn. Um, so Secure by comparison is 170, and the next best is 133. Um, so that's that's a very big uplift as well. It's also very interesting that it's a four turn heal over time, right? Most uh, heal over times in the game, in fact, every other one is a three turn duration, whereas Secure gets that extra fourth turn, which goes a long way to not just um, like it, it massively pumps out that maximum amount of healing that she does. You know, she's got a high heal per turn, but she's also got a very high net heal that she does as well. Now, obviously, Heal over time isn't always as great as immediate heals, right? Because it's, it's inherently linked as a buff. So if you remove that buff, it gets dispelled, it gets blocked, it gets um, stolen or, or shell-shocked or anything like that, then you obviously lose the rest of the healing. Like that's just the way heal over time works. But the, the counter to that is, is that because it's done on a per turn basis, you don't necessarily waste over heal on a hero, you know? So... What I mean by that is if you take El Coyote as an example and all of your heroes are missing only 100 health, he then heals them for 500 health. So that's essentially 400 health, which is just over the top and it does nothing. Whereas a heal over time, it allows you to sort of like lose a bit of health, regenerate it, lose more health the next turn, regenerate it, lose a bit more, regenerate it. It's an ongoing heal, um, which is kind of the, the counter to it being tied to a buff. So yeah, the summary on that front is really just that it is a very good heal over time. Uh, it's insanely high as the net amount of health. It is actually the highest uh, heal that you've got available to you um, just on, on the side there. Um, the next two parts of a skill, we've got to quickly churn through them, otherwise we will run out over time on this review. So looking at the next line item, it's the yellow defense buff. So the caster and nearby allies get plus 94 defense against yellow for four turns. So Essentially, how this works is it is just a defense buff, but it only applies to damage coming from a yellow source, right? So yellow tiles, yellow skills, yellow slash attacks, um, minions on a yellow hero, it will give you a 94% defense improvement against those damage sources. Uh, I do emphasize the word defense improvement because it's not a damage reduction. So we're not getting 94% less damage. How it actually works its way through the damage calculation is it comes out as being a 56% reduction in damage, all right? So we're, it's roughly half, a little over half the damage. Uh, sorry, a little under half the damage is what we are going to be taking while this buff is active. And that's just how the damage calc runs because you're putting effectively a 194 or 1.94 on the denominator of a calculation. Um, a bit about the buff itself, 94%, it's the standard effect, uh, same as the um, most of the other heroes. The difference is though that Secure is doing it for four turns, everyone else only does it for three turns. So again, we're getting that extra one turn on Secure that we don't see on all the other hero options. Um, generally speaking though, for this effect, I don't find it to be very, um, how shall we say? I don't find it to be hugely useful in the raid arenas or anything like that. I I rarely have had times when either I've used it or I've encountered it on defense teams where I've found this buff to make any noticeable difference um, to the outcome of the fight. And, and the reason why this is, is number one, it only affects strong damage on a hero. 
So in the case of Secura, she's a purple hero and it's affecting yellow damage. Yellow is strong against her, right? So all it's effectively doing at this point is undoing the strong color damage. Strong damage is normally double damage, reduce it by half and you come back out where you started. It's not really playing too much into it. It's effectively just making a neutral tile. And yes, I do know that this is only the purple heroes that affects. The nearby allies might be of a different color. So then it's halving neutral damage, which is more of an impact. But the other side to it as well is that there are still three other colors which are neutral against the heroes which are unaffected, right? Um, if you look at Sakura, she's only blocking or reducing damage from yellow sources. Purple, green, blue, red, all still unaffected. So you're only taking out 20% or reducing 20% of the damage sources in the game. So generally, I don't find it to be making much of an impact in these fights um, because of those two reasons. There is a little bit of a niche use for Secura, which I have kind of mentioned in other reviews of this buff, uh, and that's on War Machines. So normally I discuss how it's of no use on War Machines because you're taking um, a strong color, sorry, a weak color hero against the War Machine. So you take the example of Jack. Jack is a green hero. He gives off a red buff. In order to make use of it on War Machine, you have to take a green hero against a red War Machine. So you're taking weak tile damage and weak, weak damage against the War Machine. However, for yellow and purple, so Secure and Nima, this isn't the case because yellow and purple are inherently weak and strong against each other. So in the case of this, you take a purple team against a yellow war machine. So for Secura, it does kind of make sense, right? You can take her along against a yellow war machine. You're not sacrificing necessarily tile damage because you're not losing that weak, strong elemental buffs, but you're also taking on that reduced damage, which is of some benefit. Now, Again, I'm not saying that Secure is going to be a meta hero against War Machines. I, I think there's still much better options that you can take along um, to fill the roles of, you know, attack buff, defense down, elemental defense down, bonus damage against strong elements. Um, I think those are much more impactful on a War Machine than what Secure's buff is going to be. But it is an option, right? If you find you're struggling with survival and you've got this hero up your sleeve, then, you know, maybe it might be an option to bring in there um, because she does have a lot of uses or a big use as a survival hero um, in those war machine fights as well. But in general though, like I said, at the top of this section, I don't find this buff to be very useful. Not generally speaking in raids, wars, and sometimes it's got a use in war machines, but generally it's not a massive effect if, um, highly impactful buff. The final part of her skill though cannot be said to be the same. Uh, it's the ailment immunity or the ailment resistance. So the caster and nearby allies will resist new status ailments for four turns and this effect cannot be cleared. Now this is an incredibly powerful effect, right? It, ef it essentially grants uh, Secura and her nearby allies complete immunity to new status elements that will be coming their way for four turns. And it will always be four turns because the buff can't be cleared. So it can't be dispelled, can't be stolen, can't be shell-shocked or anything like that. You will always get four turns worth of duration out of this element immunity. Unless, of course, you die. But, I mean, that's the case for every buff. So why this is so powerful, this buff, is because it blocks every single ailment that would be coming onto these heroes. So we're talking mindless attack, we're talking charge block, we're talking charge speed down, silences, damage over time, poison, burn, bleed, dodge negation, attack de debuffs, defense debuffs, healing inhibitions, armor inhibitions, and so many more. Anything which is constituted as being a negative status effect is a status ailment and it will block them. Now, it is also very notable that this effect runs for four turns in duration, as opposed to most heroes that have it, which is only for three turns. Now, that does come at a price, right? So if we look at one of the other most common examples of this buff, it's on Doodle. Doodle does this effect to five allies, so all allies, for three turns. So that's effectively 15 turns worth of duration. If you take five heroes by three, it's 15. Secura does it for four turns to three allies, so it's only a 12 in terms of its range. So it comes at a, a downside, like we're not getting a full five ally effect, but we are still getting an extra turn for the heroes that are affected by the buff. Now, there is one thing to note. 
and that is that this ailment shield is classed as, for whatever reason, a defensive buff in the game's engine. Now, what that means is that there are a subset of heroes that can bypass, quote, bypass defensive buffs and apply their ailments to those heroes anyway, even though you're supposed to be immune and able to resist them. So two notable cases of this, no, there's three now really, um, but you've got heroes like Sidestep, Shutdown, Thunk. These guys have in their skill, it literally says, this um, effect can bypass, or this attack can bypass defensive buffs, including counterattack. Now, I personally strongly disagree with this classification. Um, in SGG's history, a defensive buff has been one which specifically uh, affects or improves the defense stat of a hero in the damage calculation. And element immunity in no way affects a hero's buff. I mean, to me, if you're going to be granting resistance to new ailments, there shouldn't be any way to bypass it. You, you should be immune effectively, but that's not the case. So it is just something to be aware of. Uh, if you ever see it happen uh, and you know, you've tried to use secure to block sidestep, sidestep will pierce through it. Like it's just the way the game is working at the moment. And apparently that's working as intended because that's just what SGG say. But in spite of that one little edge case where it doesn't work as well, um, it is still an incredibly powerful effect, right? There's so many ailments that can flip a game or flip an entire fight just by being able to proc it. And if you can avoid it being procced, then well, you're in a much better position. So overall, I think that Sakura is going to be a very, very useful hero into a lot of teams. She's one of only a handful and a very small handful of heroes that deal out at both a notable amount of damage and can function as a decent healer as well, all right? There's not many heroes that can do that. Ghost is an example where she functions as both a pseudo healer and a damage dealer, but there's not many other options in the game. Now, she's not a top tier hero in either of those categories. She's not an A tier damage dealer and she's not a top tier healer either, but because she can do both of those quite well. She's not far behind those top options in the game. She does then have this incredibly useful effect tacked onto the end, which is the ailment immunity, ailment immunity, which has just so many uses. And the fact that it lasts that full turn longer than anyone else um, is pretty amazing. My only nitpick with Sakura is that she's an AoE three hero, right? She's only affecting caster and nearby with all of her effects. Personally, I would have loved to have seen maybe that yellow buff disappear and make her an AoE 5 for the heal and the, the status resistance. But, I mean, I can understand how that is would be too much when you also factor in she's got that upfront damage as well. So, yeah, for Secure's grading, I am going to give her an A grade for war and raid attacks, right? She is going to be a very good hero. She's a hero that you can slot into a team as either part of a yellow, uh, sorry, a purple stack. So just chuck her in there as an extra hero, or you can slot her in as an off color hero in your stacks as like a healer or a support hero into those teams. For the war machines, I am gonna knock her down, but keep her higher than I usually do for these um, sniping heroes without anything else. So I'm gonna give her a B grade for war machines. Like I said, there is that edge case for um, the yellow buff as the yellow defense buff, but also for that element shield because a lot of war machines de deal out a hefty amount of DOT. On the event side of things though, she's not a great option. Snipers don't make good um, competition or completion heroes. There is that heal over time, which does benefit one of the scoring metrics, which is the, the, the health score. But I'd rather take a full team healer like, you know, El Coyote. Um, it's going to give you better scoring. So I'm going to give her a B minus for eventing um, as her grade there. On the defense side of things, so war and raid defenses, I'm going to give her an A minus. I would say that flank is going to be her ideal position on a defense team. Some might argue she'd make a great tank. I counter that argument every time someone says a purple is going to be a good tank because 8-bit is such an easy hero to acquire. I don't think that while 8-bit is so readily available, unless a purple tank is just off the charts ballistically broken, Purple will just quite simply never be a great tanking option in our game. So I'm, I'm going to give her an A minus, but say that flank is her best position on a defense team. For the three tournament settings, so obviously we've got Bloody Battle up front. She does unfortunately lose her heal. There is no healing available, but she does still have the damage and the ailment immunity. So she retains quite a bit of usefulness. So I'm going to give her a B grade for Bloody Battle attack and a B minus for Bloody Battle defense. 
on the buff booster side of things, she is creating a lot of buffs, right? She creates three buffs for herself and nearby allies, so nine buffs in total. So I'm gonna give her an A grade for buff booster attack and an A minus for buff booster defense. And finally, on the charge tournament side of things, she does get a speed improvement going from 53 up to 65. Um, so that comes out, I'm gonna give her an A grade for her charge tournament attack grade and an A for a charge tournament defense grade. So overall, that comes out as being a B plus for her overall attack grade and an A minus for her overall defense grade. And that concludes the content for this review of uh, Secura. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining me. Uh, these are just always my personal opinions. I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback, so please do drop down and leave me a note in the comments section. I try to read and respond as much as possible. If the video was helpful for you, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel and all of that. There's plenty of other stuff around, so feel free to check it out. Uh, hopefully, there's plenty of other reviews that are of use to you as well. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining me. I do hope I will see you again soon, but until then, good luck. Stay safe and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.